Okay, so because of wrong teachings, uh, in the last half of the first century, uh, CE, that means uh, from around uh, maybe 75 CE, uh, images of Buddha first appeared uh, in Gandhava, in Gandhara, uh, in Gandhara place in India, uh, Buddha statues uh, were first created. So you look here, uh, it's about 500 years after the Buddha passed away. You know? uh, the Buddha said uh, that original Buddhism will last for 500 years. So when people practice original Buddhism, uh, they understand the Buddha's teachings uh, that we have to help ourselves. The Buddha said, no, no man can bless another. Uh, the Buddha said, uh, our good actions will bless us, our evil actions uh, will curse us. Uh, so, uh, karma is very important. Uh, so, because people did not understand the, the Buddha's teachings, uh, Buddha's statues uh, started to appear 500 years after the Buddha passed away. Uh, people uh, pray to Buddha statues and ask for help. Uh, and then, uh, in the second century CE, uh, there was a king called Kanishka. Uh, he came into power. Uh, and his empire extended from Afghanistan uh, to Central Asia over a vast piece of land. And then he liked Mahayana Buddhism uh, and under him uh, Mahayana Buddhism uh, developed uh, and he convened the fourth Sangha Council, uh, uh, the fourth Sangha Council uh, where they compiled uh, the Mahayana books together and put them down in writing. Uh. So. Uh, when this Chinese uh, uh, monks uh, like uh, Xuan Chang and uh, Asian and all that, they came to India, they found uh, that Mahayana Buddhism was flourishing uh, side by side with uh, this uh, Hinayana Buddhism. Uh, and they also reported uh, that actually Hinayana Buddhism uh, was more popular uh, than Mahayana Buddhism. Uh, there were more monks. Uh, more monasteries uh, who, which were Hinayana. Uh, uh. And then as time went on, uh, by the time of I Ching, uh, which was uh, around 670, uh, uh, the differences uh, between Hinayana Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism uh, was less and less. Uh, and the two traditions uh, began to blend together. Uh. How is that? For example, like nowadays, uh, even some Theravada monks uh, believe in the Bodhisattva path, la, right? Uh, the Mahayana books uh, talk about seven, about six paramis la, or six paramitas. La. Our Theravada books uh, talk about ten paramis. La. In other words, our Theravada books uh, also uh, accept the Bodhisattva path. But originally, the uh, Bodhisattva path was not the Buddha's teaching, but Theravada uh, this Hinayana monks, uh, they started to accept. Uh, so that's why uh, the differences uh, became less and less. Uh. And then later, uh, uh, the esoteric Buddhism, uh, uh, secret school, uh, became popular. Uh, uh, became popular and influenced the uh, Hinayana Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism. Uh. Uh, they started also to practice more mantras and all these things. Uh. Uh, so, uh, uh, then uh, the two Buddhism uh, started to disappear. Uh. Now this, uh, now we come to this esoteric Buddhism uh, uh, secret school. Uh. This secret school, uh, why do they call it secret school? Because uh, some of the teachings uh, were very different from what the Buddha taught. Uh. For example, uh, when this uh, monk called Nagajuna who is called Long Supusa in Chinese. La. When he started to write the Mahayana books, uh, and he brought out these Mahayana sutras, uh, people asked him, la, this he has mentioned in his biography, la. he said people asked him, why is it before uh, there were no such Mahayana sutras? Now you claim uh, these are the words of the Buddha. You know what he said? He said uh, that the Buddha hid these uh, books uh, in the ocean, uh, and he went down to the dragon palace uh, and he brought up these books uh, which were hidden by the Buddha. Uh. But this we cannot accept uh, for various reasons. Uh. Firstly, uh, these Mahayana books uh, always talk about 
uh, Mahayana and Hinayana la, Tai Sing, Kasyo Sing la. But during the Buddha's time There was no Tai Sing, Kasyo Sing ma. The Sangha was one la. Uh, That's the most important thing la. Secondly, uh, during the Buddha's time There were no books la. Nobody made books la. So how could, have the, how could the Buddha uh, Have hidden away books la? Thirdly, uh, the Buddha said uh, That his teachings uh, are open For all to see la. The true Dhamma uh, is open for all to see. Uh, and the Buddha said, uh, if anything is secretive, uh, then it is deviant. Uh, if it is secretive, uh, then you have something to hide. Uh, right? Uh, that's why you find in the secret school, uh, they have secret teachings. Uh, for example, like uh, mantras. Mantras came from Brahmanism. Brahmanism, Hinduism. Uh, and Bra- these mantras are very powerful words. Uh, uh, and these powerful words, uh, they are so powerful. Uh, I like to say in Hokkien, uh, uh, they do black magic, uh, they use mantras. Uh, to counter the black magic, they also use other mantras. Uh, to keep uh, spirits, uh, what we call kui kia, uh, to control the kui kia, the spirits, uh, they also use mantras. Uh, and then, uh, on top of that, uh, uh, they have, for example, the t- what is called Tantric Buddhism. La. Tantric Buddhism uh, uh, comes from Tantra Yoga, uh, things like the Kama Sutra, uh, where they talk about the teacher uh, can make love to the disciple uh, to have sex. La. And they say uh, this can lead to enlightenment. La. But the Buddha says uh, that when we have uh, sensual pleasures, uh, it is impossible uh, not to be uh, attached to it. Uh, so the Buddha says uh, sensual uh, desires are, are an obstruction in the holy life. Uh, but these people, because they uh, don't understand the Dhamma, then they teach all these things. Uh, and uh, other things la, like uh, they do a lot of rituals la, uh, and also in the secret school la, they like what is practiced in uh, Tibetan Buddhism la, or Lamaism la, they go into a trance la, they go into a trance uh, just like in uh, uh, this uh, Mao, what do you call it now? Mao San, Mao San uh, the school of Taoism la, which is corrupt la, uh, so uh, all these things uh, you find uh, in uh, the secret school. Uh, so, so uh, according to this, uh, according to this uh, uh, professor Hirakawa, uh, that is, he, he says uh, one of the most influential theories in East Asia divided Buddhist history into th- three periods: uh, the true Dhamma, the counterfeit Dhamma. And the end of the Dhamma. Uh, so, true Dhamma, counterfeit Dhamma, and end of the Dhamma. True Dhamma is the first 500 periods, 500 years period uh, after the Buddha passed away. Uh, that is the true Dhamma. Uh. And then the counterfeit Dhamma is when Hinayana Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism started. Uh. Uh, this period uh, is called the counterfeit Dhamma. Uh. From about 50 BCE, uh, uh, up to uh, 700 CE. La. So that means about 500 years after the Buddha's passing away, uh, until about 1,200 years after the Buddha's passing away. La. So this counterfeit Dhamma, instead of relying on the Buddha's words uh, in the suttas and the Vinaya, they are more interested in new Mahayana sutras uh, and also in the Abhidhamma, Jataka tales uh, and uh, commentaries and Visuddhi Maga and all these later books uh, which the Buddha says actually are the words of disciples, uh, not his words. Uh. And then the end of the Dhamma is the time uh, when uh, the secret school started, uh, esoteric Buddhism. Uh, that is about 700 uh, up to 1100 CE. Uh. That means the last three or four hundred years. Uh, uh, of Buddhism in India. Uh, it's called the end of the Dhamma because at that time uh, they were not practicing the Dhamma anymore. Uh, 
they are more interested in rituals lah, rituals like mantras, uh, uh, this uh, tantric Buddhism, and uh, going to trance and keeping spirits and all these things lah. That is not Dhamma at all lah. That's why even though the name uh, Buddhism uh, still continued lah, but that is the end of the Dhamma lah. No more Dhamma. They are not really interested in the Dhamma anymore lah. Uh. So here I like to uh, summarize uh, what is the difference uh, between Hinayana Buddhism uh, and original Buddhism uh, is that in Hinayana Buddhism uh, they are interested in the later books uh, like the Abhidhamma commentaries etc. Uh, which is not the Buddha's words. Although they acknowledge uh, that the original words of the Buddha are found in the suttas and the Vinaya. Then secondly, what's the difference between Mahayana Buddhism and original Buddhism? Uh, is that they reject the original suttas uh, and they follow the uh, Mahayana sutras. Uh. The original sutras uh, are called uh, Hinayana books uh, by the Mahayana. Uh, and in the Bodhisattva precepts, uh, there is one precept uh, where they are encouraged not to read the Hinayana books, uh, the original discourses of the Buddha, and instead uh, to propagate the Mahayana sutras. Uh, uh, and they talk about Paramis and the Bodhisattva path and all that. Uh. But actually, in the suttas, uh, we find uh, the Buddha said uh, that he look into the past 91 world cycles. Lah. That means one night lah, the Buddha did not sleep. Lah. The whole night lah, he was looking into the past. Lah. But 91 world cycles, lah, which is an extremely long time. Lah. The Buddha said he only saw uh, six Samasam Buddhas. Six Buddhas lah, who are willing to teach the Dhamma to the world. Lah. In other words, lah, uh, there are 99.99% of the Buddhas lah, are Pacheka Buddhas. Lah. Buddhas who do not want to teach. Uh. That's why in the Isigili Sutta uh, of the Majjhima Nikaya, the Buddha said at one time, uh, outside Rajagaha, there were 500 Pacheka Buddhas. Uh. So you see, uh, at any one time, uh, you can find a lot of Pacheka Buddhas, uh, but they all don't want to teach the Dhamma. Uh. Uh, so, um, that is the that is the real fact. Uh. Now these Jataka stories uh, on which the Paramis are based, uh, if you look into them, uh, they are too childish to be true. Uh. Jataka stories uh, where animals can talk, where animals can behave uh, uh, more uh, superior to human beings uh, uh, and, and uh, all this. Uh, uh. And lastly, uh, I just like to say, uh, that the Chinese version of the suttas, uh, the Pali suttas, uh, now uh, left with them uh, are called the Agama sutras. Uh. And these Agama sutras, uh, when we compare them uh, with the uh, Pali suttas, uh, we find uh, that they are very much division. Uh. For example, our Diga Nikaya, the Pali Diga Nikaya, the equivalent uh, is called the Chang Ahan Jing. Uh. The Diga Nikaya has 34 suttas. In the Chang Ahan Jing, uh, they have 30 suttas. In our Majima Nikaya, we have 152 suttas. They have 221, uh, slightly more. Uh. In our Sangyuta Nikaya, we have 2,872 suttas. They have 1,362, which is less than half. Uh. In the Anguttara Nikaya, we have 2,198 suttas. They have only 471 suttas, la. only about a quarter. La. Also, you find uh, the uh, Chang Ahan Ching, uh, the long discourses, uh, come from the Dharma Gupta school. The Chung Ahan Ching uh, come from the Savasti Vadin school. The Cha Ahan Ching uh, comes from the Savasti Vadin school. The Chengyi Ahan Jing uh, comes from they don't know where, uh, an undetermined school. Uh. Why is this? Uh? Because uh, they, they look down on these uh, Hinayana, what they call the Hinayana Suttas. Uh. So they neglected these Suttas uh, and over the centuries uh, they lost these Suttas. Uh. So after they lost these Suttas, uh, they tried to recover the Suttas. And 
they only recovered part of it. Uh, so the suttas and the agamas are not as complete as our Theravada Pali suttas. It's mentioned by this historian uh, that our Pali suttas are, are complete uh, from the time of Emperor Asoka up to now. It's complete, we didn't lose our suttas, you know. So our Theravada Nikayas uh, are very complete. Uh. Now because the suttas are not complete, uh, uh, some of the things they say uh, in the Agamas uh, are different from our Pali suttas. For, for example, our Pali suttas uh, talk about ten Sangyojana, ten fetters. They only have five fetters. Uh. And we, in our suttas, we talk about liberation by mind and liberation by wisdom. But in the, our suttas, liberation by mind uh, means liberation by mind as well as liberation by wisdom. Uh. But for them, they only have liberation by wisdom. Uh. And they say there's no such thing as the formless realm, uh, whereas we have the formless realm. Uh. Also, in the Chinese version of the history of Indian Buddhism, uh, they have a lot of stories. Uh. In Chinese Buddhism, uh, there are a lot of stories. Uh. So, for example, uh, they say uh, that the Emperor Asoka uh, tried to kill some monks uh, who did not follow the orthodox school. Uh. He sent them off uh, in a boat uh, and he, they got somebody uh, to make holes in the boat uh, so that when the boat went halfway, uh, the boat sang. Uh. And according to the stories, uh, the, some of the Arahans uh, helped the other monks uh, to safety. Uh. This uh, we find is impossible. Uh. You find the history of Asoka, uh, he's so compassionate, uh, he will not even want to kill animals. How can he kill human beings? Uh? And on top of that, uh, monks, uh, how dare he kill monks? Uh? So a lot of these stories uh, uh, in Mahayana Buddhism, uh, we cannot believe. Uh. They even say uh, that Ananda's preceptor uh, was Mahakasapa. Just because Mahakasapa was very famous, uh, uh, they say uh, Ananda's preceptor was Mahakasapa. But in our Vinaya books, uh, Ananda's preceptor uh, was a monk called Belaka Sisa. Uh, and even this uh, professor Hirakawa, uh, he does not believe uh, that Ananda's preceptor uh, was Mahakasapa. Because in the suttas uh, and the Vinaya books, uh, we find uh, Mahakasapa and Ananda many times uh, they were not in agreement. Uh. So I will. Uh, end the talk uh, by saying uh, that we have to remember this sutta uh, in the Anguttara Nikaya 4.180 uh, where the Buddha said uh, that in future if any monk says that such and such are the Buddha's words uh, we should compare it with original suttas and the Vinaya only if it follows the original suttas and the Vinaya uh, can you take them uh, to be the Buddha's teachings otherwise reject them and the last thing I'd like to say uh, is to notice uh, that originally uh, Theravada school uh, followed only the suttas and the Vinaya, original suttas and the Vinaya. But nowadays, uh, our Theravada school, uh, we are already corrupted. We follow the Hinayana teachings. We follow on top of the suttas and the Vinaya. Uh, we follow the Abhidhamma, we follow the commentaries, we follow the Visuddhi Maga, we follow later books like the Pitaku Padesa uh, and all that. Uh. Uh, so what is being practiced nowadays uh, is not really Theravada Buddhism but Hinayana Buddhism. Uh, so we should practice uh, the original teachings of the Buddha uh, which is actually Theravada Buddhism. Uh, uh, and for here. Uh, yes, but this is only a minor difference, la. not so, uh, and I'm not very clear la, uh, why this is so. La. Uh, I read it somewhere, but uh, I didn't keep it in my mind, <laughs> so I can't tell you of it. Okay, this uh, this is found in the Abhi. I'm not sure it's Abhi Dhamma books or by written by Buddha Gosa later. Lah. Then when the Buddha spoke the Abhidhamma in heaven, uh, 
800 million devas became arahans. Lah. And this only shows uh, ignorance of the suttas. Lah. We look into the suttas, uh, you find uh, the Buddha said uh, that arahans are only found in the human, human world. Lah. Only humans can become arahans. Only humans can become arahans. Because you see, uh, uh, devas and devis, uh, they have a very good life up there. They are not willing to struggle. We only make effort in the spiritual path uh, when we see Dukkha. So like nowadays, uh, the world is quite materialistic, quite good. Uh, everybody is enjoying life. Uh. Who wants to become a monk or a nun? Nobody wants to become a monk. Right? Only when you suffer, uh, then only you think you want to become a monk or a nun. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's why the Buddha says uh, in the suttas, uh, I forgot exactly which sutta, but it is mentioned uh, that arahans are only found in the human plane. A lot of people don't know uh, that anagamins uh, do not become arahans. You know. Anagamins, uh, they have done practically all their work already. So they are reborn in the fourth jhana plane uh, in the Sutta Vasa heavens. Uh. From there, they pass away and enter Nibbana. They don't attain arahanhood, you know. From there, they just enter Nibbana when they pass away. Uh, uh, for Devas and Devis, uh, they can become Sotapanna. Uh, it is mentioned in the suttas uh, that sometimes when the Dhamma is spoken, uh, these Devas and Devis, they like to come and listen, you know. And when they listen and they understand the Dhamma, they attain stream entry. Uh, okay. It just says uh, that... Uh, Intention is karma. Intention is very important. What is your intention? So, if your intention uh, is to help people, uh, but you help them the wrong way, uh, uh, you don't create bad karma uh, because your intention is not bad. Uh, but then, uh, because you are bodo bodo, uh, then they continue to be bodo bodo. Uh, 